So once again, thank you for joining us for the Virginia Poverty Law Center Housing Coffee Chat. And I'm now going to turn this over to Laura Dobbs. Hi, everyone. My name is Laura Dobbs, and I'm a housing attorney with the Virginia Poverty Law Center. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, to start things off, uh, I just want to let everyone know that July comes with a lot of cost housing law. Um, First, we have all these great laws that are going to affect, but we also have different tenant protections that are expiring. Um, one of those is that protections that the state of Virginia passed during special session of last year expired at the end of June. Um, that protection required landlords to apply for rental assistance on the tenant's behalf before they could move forward with the eviction process. It also required that landlords cooperate with those tenants in applying for those funds. Um, and for those who don't know, Virginia is far ahead of the rest of the country in setting up a rental assistance program using federal stimulus dollars. Um, it's not a loan, it's just money that goes directly to the landlord to help catch up that ten uh, tenant on their rent and keep them housed. You know, particularly at a time when being housed is really important to both family health and community health. Um, we know a lot of people are still suffering I'm sorry if my voice is a little muffled. Let me try to get a little bit closer. Is this better now or I'm still muffled? You're gonna need to talk so I can find out whether it's muffled or not. Is this better or is it clear? It is. Okay, all right, great. I will try to lean a little bit closer to the camera then you just get a nice close up view of my face. Um, so as I was saying, these protections expired at the end of the month. However, there are still some things that are helpful for tenants. For one, there's the federal eviction protection that has been extended through the end of July. So it will expire July 31st. Um, that's not an automatic protection, and there are steps tenants need to take to take advantage of that. You know, first they have to have lost income during COVID or had really high medical expenses. Um, they have to be below a certain income threshold. So as long as someone has received both of those stimulus payments, they qualify under that income requirement. Um, and then if you know they're going to be evicted and have to double up with someone or go to a congregate shelter, they qualify. Um, and what they would need to do in that situation is complete a declaration form that the Centers for Disease Control has created and then provide a copy of that to their landlord. Laura, um, we're going to have to take a hot break for a second okay. and your voice is very muffled it's very hard to see so I think you said that you have headphones or something yeah let me try that over yeah and then maybe we can just start over from the beginning okay. of the information it sounded good earlier guys <laughs> or ladies Tony, ladies and gentlemen off. One other option would be for her to come to my office. Yeah, Laura, do you want to run over to Jay's real fast? Thank you for your patience. How is my voice? Is your voice is perfect. Laura, let's, you need to keep talking so we can right. say. I'm sorry about the tech issues. Can you hear me? Much better. Okay, great. All right, let's try this again. <laughs> um, so those federal eviction protections are gonna end at the end of July and the government, federal government has made clear that they're not going to be extending that again. So at that point, a lot of these eviction cases that have been put on hold are gonna move forward. Um, however, that program that provides rental assistance for people behind on rent is still going to be there. And we have a lot of money coming from the federal government to help both landlords and tenants alike get back on their feet and stay housed. Um, recently, we just hired a couple navigators that can help tenants in applying for that rental assistance. There'll also be navigators at the other legal aids across the country. Additionally, there will be housing counselors to assist landlords in applying for those funds. One of the things that can take, you know, eat up time and trying to process that application is simply getting the correct documentation together. So with these assisters, it'll be hopefully much easier for addressing those barriers that make it difficult to get those rental assistance applications together and hopefully get those more timely processed. 
Um, additionally, starting July 1, we have some great new laws that went into effect um, that will also hopefully help tenants get back on their feet. One of those is an extension of the pay or quit period. So anytime um, a landlord uh, or has a tenant that is behind on rent, they have to give them a written notice saying how much they owe and give them a period of time to either catch up or move. Um, previously, it was five days, but last year during the special session, they extended that to 14 days. Um, during the regular session that we just had back in January and February, um, they extended that protection through next summer. So tenants will still have that 14 day period uh, to pay everything they owe before the landlord can move forward with the eviction. This is gonna be really important for a lot of folks because you may have received a paycheck on the first, but, and you know, not have everything you need to pay for rent. Um, and you may not get that second paycheck within that five days. So extending that the 14 days, hopefully by that time, the tenant has received a second paycheck or they've had the opportunity to reach out for help getting rental assistance. So that could be really important for a lot of families. Um, secondly, there's greater expansions around what's using what's called the right of redemption. Um, this is what allows, after that tenant has been sued, allows them to pay everything they owe, including any late fees and court costs, and if they've accrued any attorney's fees um, to the landlord and avoid that eviction. This is true even after a judgment for possession has been entered, which is that um, the court saying that, yes, you owe the money and that the landlord can then take the next step to remove the tenant from the property. So as long as that tenant pays everything they owe, including those court costs at that point, sheriff's fees, uh, 48 hours before that sheriff's eviction, they can stay. There's also no limit on the number of times a tenant can exercise this option. Um, there is some exception if they are renting from a small mom and pop landlord, that landlord could serve them a written notice saying that, you know, you can only do this once per uh, 12 months in a lease. Um, but for most people, um, this will open up an opportunity to have more chances to pay and get caught up before getting removed from the property. Um, and another huge one is tougher penalties if a landlord illegally evicts a tenant. Um, we saw several instances of this early on the pandemic when the courts were closed, where some unscrupulous landlords were taking law into their own hands um, and going above the law without going through the appropriate court process and either changing the locks or cutting off the electricity or water or making it otherwise unsafe for that tenant to live there. And when that happens, um, it's you're kind of either relying on calling the police and hoping they do the right thing, or you can file something in court called a relief from unlawful exclusion. However, a number of judges were waiting several weeks before scheduling those cases, and there wasn't really great incentive for the landlord to cooperate. Um, but now uh, the courts will have to schedule those cases much more quickly. Uh, they have to have that first hearing within five days. Um, Additionally, there's a $5,000 statutory damages provision added onto that. That simply means that regardless of, you know, actual harm to the tenant, they can recover that $5,000 um, in addition to any out-of-pocket expenses they had, such as if they had to go stay in a hotel or they had to buy extra food that was lost. Um, and this is not only helpful for tenants recovering from the trauma of being locked out of their home, but it should also hopefully serve as a really good deterrent from landlords who are threatening to illegally evict their tenant. The tenant can say, hey, if you do that, I have the right to sue you and recover this money. So hopefully we will see a big drop in the number of illegal evictions that happen in Virginia. Um, there's other great new laws, but I'm not going to go into detail about those. You can uh, check those out on VPLC's webpage, vplc.org has information about all of these and the other great things that we worked on during this last session. Um, but as I mentioned, uh, the state level eviction protections that are requiring landlords to cooperate with rental assistance are expiring. And although we are grateful that, you know, Virginia has built relation, good relationships with a lot of landlords across the state, um, our legal aid attorneys still encounter a number who are uncooperative, don't want to accept funds, um, and the only thing that is forcing them into that situation before evicting a tenant were those state level protections. After that protection went into place during special session, uh, there is a double in the amount of rental assistance that was put out. Back in October of 2020, it was roughly 
$9 million in real estate since it went out. But after that, protection went to a place that nearly doubled, more than doubled to $20 billion, um, in December of 2020. And it's steadily gone up since. So we know that that is a really effective tool for directing both landlords and tenants to take advantage of this rental assistance that the state has. One of the important aspects of that is that in that late notice that the landlord has to give the tenant, it includes that information about the rental assistance. Um, for many tenants, that might be the only access point they have for knowing that this program even exists. So that is a really critical piece that we do not want to lose. Um, with these protections ending, we're expecting to see a pretty big spike in the number of evictions, um, as many judges were simply continuing cases out past the end of these protections. Um, I took a look at the eviction docket for a couple of different cities, um, and you have some with more than 60 eviction cases on one day alone in one city in the next couple of weeks. Um, so, you know, we people are trying to say like, oh, we're crying wolf, but that's really not the situation. It's just evidence that these protections have worked throughout the pandemic. And why would we, um, you know, put away the umbrella when it's continuing to rain for a lot of our Virginians? The U.S. Census Bureau estimates that roughly 34.6% of Virginians are at risk of either eviction or foreclosure in the next two months. So now is the time that we really need to make sure that we're getting this assistance out to folks. Um, additionally, with this next tranche of federal funding, hopefully there will also be money allocated to help uh, with mortgage assistance for those homeowners who are at risk of losing their home altogether. So when we go into special session, which will start the first two weeks of August, the General Assembly will be allocating more of this uh, federal stimulus dollars and we'll have another opportunity to extend those protections that just expired ensuring that there's ongoing cooperation with this rental assistance program, that tenants continue to receive information about the program, um, and making sure that we're slowing down these evictions, giving tenants more time to catch up on rent, make sure landlords are made whole, um, to kind of smooth out what we know is coming as far as the number of evictions. Um, I think that's most of what I was gonna cover. I guess the last piece is that, um, one of the other protections uh, that is still in place is tenants have the right to ask for a 60 day continuance. Um, they have that option to ask for that until September 28th. Um, all they need to do is they need to have been sued for an eviction based on non-payment of rent. Uh, they need to go to court. I think that's important for any time you're communicating with a tenant, the stress and the importance of going to court. And they need to bring written proof that they've had some sort of loss of income during the pandemic. Um, that could be a letter from an employer or a bank statement showing reduced earnings or um, a benefit letter from unemployment insurance, anything that's written that shows that loss of income. And then they need to ask the judge for a 60 day continuance. Um, we have heard that some judges are probing a little bit to see how that loss of income was related to COVID. So tenants should be prepared to answer those questions in case that comes up. But once they do that, they have the right to that six-day continuance, which doesn't make the case go away. It just gives that tenant more time to catch up on rent, to access that rental assistance. Um, so we urge people to share that information because until we get the General Assembly to reenact some of those protections, that's really the biggest tool that tenants are going to have um, to stave off an eviction while they try to get rental assistance. And um, looks like Monica has putting a lot of helpful information in the chat about um, where to call to access rental assistance. Um, that's 703-962-1884. Um, and then if a tenant um, is facing eviction, they can call our eviction legal helpline and get brief advice from an attorney. Um, and we also have folks who can help in applying for that rental assistance. So if someone doesn't have access reliable access to the internet or to email, since a lot of those documents need to be submitted online, or if they're um, a Spanish speaker, we have someone who can help them. And that number is 833-NO-EVICT. And at this point, I'm happy to answer any questions folks have. Thank you, Laura. Um, and before we open it up for questions, and well, one, I'm just gonna remind you, I've seen a couple of them. A couple questions in the chat, which I will go back to. 
Uh, but just a quick reminder that you can use the raise hand function and we can call on you that way. But I'm also going to, and I know it's hard to do it on a Zoom call, but our housing team has created a really great, it's like a little business card, um, says VPLC Housing Advocacy. And you open it up and it's actually a map of the um, eviction process in Virginia, step-by-step, step, everything that needs to happen. And then on the back backside, uh, what to do if your landlord evicts you without a court order, et cetera. So my email, I'm going to put my email in the chat. If you would like to have a few of these to be able to pass out, um, send me a quick email along with your address and we'll drop those into the mail to you today so we can get the word out and start passing along this information. And so I'm Tony at vplc.org. And uh, Laura, there was a question in the chat and I'm gonna go back up and find it, but it had to do with um, landlords are landlords no longer required to file the RMRP applications? Correct. Um, the state protections that were in place required a number of things. One, providing the information about the rental assistance program and required landlords to apply on behalf of tenants. They're no longer required to do that. Um, we still think there's other provisions in state law that requires them to at least accept those funds and cooperate with the landlord, um, or sorry, cooperate with the tenant applying for those, but there is no statutory requirement that the landlord apply. That doesn't mean they can't. We are definitely encouraging landlords to do so. Um, that's the most for sure way for them to be made whole um, and get that rent that is missing. Um, and I will say through the calls we receive through our eviction legal helpline, the vast majority of them are still related to non-payment of rent. Um, I would say roughly a third of those callers don't even know about the rental assistance program. Um, so that cues us in so that we need to continue to require landlords sharing that information and do a better public information campaign around that. Um, and we've seen a number of incidents where the landlord initially cooperated with rental assistance and received the funds, but then went ahead and evicted the tenant anyways. So, you know, there's ongoing outreach needed to do there to ensure that this is actually a tool that's used to keep people in their homes. Do we have any other questions? First, I'm loving the emails I see popping up that people want these housing maps. Hey, Tony, somebody in the chat wanted a clarification about what you file if a landlord unlawfully evicts you. So that is, um, it's a bit of a mouthful. It's called a tenant's petition from unlawful exclusion. Um, and we have a whole information sheet on our housing.vplc website that walks through um, where you need to file it, what the form is called, how to fill it out, and how to submit it um, to the court. So it is a court form and a tenant can do it the, him, her, him or herself, but it does. the new law does say that, that you can get your lawyer paid for, right? Correct, yeah, so if you, get an attorney, um, either hiring a private attorney or even if you go through legal aid, they can recover attorney's fees um, if the judge finds that, yes, you were in fact illegally evicted. And the significance of that is it might make it easier for you to find a lawyer if, if you don't qualify for legal aid. Exactly, yes. Um, an important note too, that if, um, if you're someone who qualifies for legal aid, um, and you don't even have the money to file that lawsuit because anytime you file something in the court, there is a fee associated. Um, you can ask for a waiver from the court. Um, it's called, you know, it's an, a Latin term of impoperous, um, basically saying that I don't have enough money for this. Can you please waive the fee for filing? Um, I will say that 
it might slow things down a little for getting your case scheduled because a judge does have to approve that. But if you're in dire straits and you don't have any other option, um, definitely ask the clerk for a copy of that form to waive the fees. I think maybe another thing to emphasize is what you said earlier about the fact that there's a lot of people out there now that are working for legal aid and Catholic charities and other places that, are, that can help people apply for the rent and relief funds. Absolutely. And this is, there's assisters, not just for tenants, but for landlords as well. Um, all of the assisters for tenants are with the various legal aid programs um, and assisters for landlords. I think they're largely with uh, Catholic charities, um, but housing opportunities made equal should have a full list of where to find the housing counselor in your area. Um, we do have a, another question. When in September does the 60 day delay provision expire? So that expires on September 28th. So it is a little confusing because this is one of the uh, protections that expired, you know, 90 days after the end of the state of emergency. So up until September 28th, a tenant can ask for a 60 day continuance. So say your eviction case is on September 28th, you can go into court, bring that documentation showing that you've had that loss of income and ask for a 60 day continuance. And that 60 day continuance is from the day that you're in court asking for it outward. It doesn't end on September 28th. That's just the last day you have to request the continuance. Hopefully that clarifies things a little bit. Is there, for the rental navigators or rental assisters, whatever the program is called, um, is there a central site where people can find information as to um, who has them and how to contact? Um, I believe there's going to be a central phone number for redirecting folks that way, and I think it's the main legal aid phone number. Um, I need to double check on that. There's some back and forth. Sure. So in the meantime, people could contact us or no? They can either call our eviction legal helpline or they can call the um, 866 legal aid phone number, which I don't remember the corresponding numbers for. I've got it. Okay. Um, you can also... Um, Housing Opportunities Made Equal, um, they're the main grantee um, and have the information of like, you know, who is with each region offering assistance. You can also reach out to them. Um, and there's a question about uh, who can qualify for rental assistance. Um, so they try to make it as low burdensome as possible for who qualifies. So if you, um, the tenant can either fill out a statement of saying that they don't have any in income. Um, they can provide proof that they're receiving some other benefits such as SNAP or unemployment. Um, otherwise showing that they're below a certain income level, which is 80% of area median income. Um, so most folks who are struggling right now are going to qualify. Um, the statement I made earlier about if someone has received both stimulus checks, that relates to the CDC eviction moratorium um, that expires at the end of this month. Um, there, the income threshold is much higher. That is if you make $99,000 or less. Um, and so the federal government says, as long as you receive those two stimulus checks, you clearly are within that income requirement. Yeah, and the statewide legal aid phone number, it's 866-534-5243. Um, another helpful aspect with this rental assistance program, in addition to the assisters with legal aid and with the various housing counseling agencies like Commonwealth Catholic Charities, um, is the rental assistance program now allows trusted third parties to help tenants apply. There is a form you have to fill out where you and that tenant sign just so that they know that you are authorized to receive information about rental assistance. Um, and receive updates about the status of that application. And I don't remember the email off the top of my head, but there's an email you can send that if you've already submitted an application, but you're waiting to hear um, the status, that you can send an email to get an update and they can let you know if there's any missing documentation. Um, if you have an eviction case coming up, I would definitely let them know so they can fast track that to ensure the funds get dispersed before that court date. 
Um, additionally, for those flying over the phone uh, directly with RRP, they have a language translation line uh, for our non-English speakers. Um, the downside is that all that documents you have to submit has to be in English, which is why it's really helpful to work with a trusted third party who can help with that translation. So you know what it is you're signing um, and what those documents are saying that you have to submit. Mm -hmm.